scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So it is important for us to understand the things to expect. Growth in the kingdom is not a mystery. No, there are many mysteries in the kingdom. Growth is not one of them growth in the kingdom is systemic that means you must understand how god increases people luke chapter 2 and 52 speaking about jesus said and jesus grew or increased and he began to list the dimensions in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men when you study the life of jesus through the synoptic gospels matthew mark luke and john and even a few revelations that came from the Pauline epistles then revelations the book of revelations when you study it it lists in details the activities and the pathway that Jesus followed to have stature as a man are we together that is why the Bible can confidently tell us to follow in his steps it can confidently tell us to look unto Jesus if there were nothing to see he would not say we should look are we together so the first thing that conferences like this not just this conference any apostolic and prophetic conference across any region especially the southeast we must have it at the back of our mind that every time god calls for a prophetic convergence like this he expects the following to happen to the people number one conferences like these are intended to equip us with the truths that help us to live effective Christian lives. This is the first thing we need to understand. Our spiritual efficiency is the first part of call. Are we together? No matter what you discuss in a conference, it does not matter the theme of the conference, whether it is a crusade, whether it is a prosperity conference, whether it is some kind of believers gathering, it does not matter the caption. If there is the absence of the communication of truths that make for the spiritual efficiency of the believer that conference did not capture everything so in order of priority conferences like this should be platforms where we are exposed to the truths that help us to live effective Christian lives number two conferences like this should allow for access it helps us to access the empowerment to fan the flames of evangelism and the maturity of believers within that territory. You must take note of this. The second goal of apostolic and prophetic conferences such as these is to fan the flames of evangelism and to fan the flames of the maturity of the saints through transformation. That means whatever happens in this conference should equip and empower us that means at the end of this conference if we are to rate this conference as successful we do not rate it using the indices of crowds alone or the indices of the presence of an anointed man no we will have to check for the indices of the efficiency in evangelism and soul winning after the conference is done to what end does this conference contribute to souls coming to Jesus I don't care what is said in the conference if it does not translate to 
perpetual and in, in increment a harvest of souls then that conference did not do much on one hand evangelism on another hand the maturity of the saints within that territory hallelujah yes usually in conferences like this at least half of the people that attend the conferences are already believers or pastors or people who have already attained a level of stature in the spirit so they are supposed to be empowered there should be the effect of a, a heightened manifestation of soul winning and then maturity of believers it means that without apostolic conferences like this the rate of growth and maturity of believers within a territory will be very slow not because there are absence of pastors but you see according to Ephesians chapter 4 the Bible speaking about the fivefold it says when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men he gave men to men and the assignment of those men apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers is to equip the saints to perfect to mature the saints hallelujah you can know the absence of a true apostolic and prophetic by apostolic i don't just mean the name apostle i hope you understand an apostolic ministry has nothing to do with the title of apostle it has to do with the ministry of one who is sent who represents the purposes of god across a territory so you know the presence of the apostolic and prophetic spirit within a territory by the level of incremental maturity of the believers within that territory that means if we take a random assessment of Christians across several churches regardless of religious biases or prejudices we should be able to ascertain the presence of a true apostolic and prophetic spirit by the level of spiritual enlightenment that the average believer with that within that territory carries it says I will give you pastors according to my heart Jeremiah 3 15 and they will feed you with wisdom and knowledge are we together so conferences like this in addition to helping our personal spiritual lives they help to fan the flames of evangelism please look at me let me tell you this no matter how effective we are as men of god the indices to measure the excellence of a man of god's ministry in order of priority is how much souls come to the kingdom through your life Bill, i don't care whether you are a pastor a missionary an evangelist whatever you are we need to see the index of souls is a very potent biblical index as soon as the holy ghost came upon the church the first sign of his presence was the harvest of souls not miracles souls 3,000 people announce his arrival. Are we together? So when the Holy Ghost came, on one hand, he now empowered the apostles who would go around doing the work. But the effect of his presence to the world was a harvest of 3,000 people. Acts chapter 2. They were caught to the heart and said, Men and brethren, what do we do? And Peter said, Repent. Are we together? yes and he says for this promise is unto you and to your children your children's children as many as are far off even those who the lord will call so we must be able to through conferences like this fan the flames of evangelism and the maturity of the saints number three the third assignment of conferences like this within a territory is to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory so as to effectively continue the work of the ministry in love in unity and power the third assignment of conferences like this targets the spiritual voices the men and the women of God within the territory to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory 
so as to effectively continue the work of the ministry in love in unity and in power if you want to help the men of god within a territory to be more effective in the work of the ministry these three dimensions must be captured love unity and power are we together and then finally in an apostolic and prophetic conference like this what do we expect the lord would usually use conferences like this to help god's people and then indeed the territory concern to experience the liberating power of the spirit through miracles signs and wonders every territory and every individual within a territory should not be the same after conferences like this a true apostolic conference does not just stop at impacting those who came the true spirit of the apostolic and the prophetic speaks even to the gates of the city it cannot stop just at the point of convergence so we expect to in a greater way experience the liberating power of the spirit that means the sick should be healed that means the oppressed should be delivered that means lives that have been downcast according to Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me the Messianic prophecy says for he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor he had to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free to deliver them who are in prison and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God is that true the Bible says to give them beauty for ashes joy for the spirit of heaviness you know for the uh, for the garment praise for the the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified that means we must experience the liberating power of the spirit so this is our checklist so that at the end of this conference we don't just say a great man of God came we check the success of that conference with respect to this are we together yes that number one did my spiritual life did I gain through the truths and the mysteries that were dispensed did I gain truths that will now help me as a man of God as an individual as a family man to experience efficiency in my spiritual life if so that conference was a success number two was there an opportunity within that conference I'm trying to read number two verbatim to fan the flames of evangelism and the flames of the maturity of the saints that means by this time next year if Christ tarries the version of you who comes for next year's conference should be a grown version it shouldn't be this one it says I came to you and I could not I only had to serve you milk I could not serve you anything because you were still babes that means I came the last time and you people wasted my effort Paul was saying now I came to bring something deeper matters of the spirit and I found out that you were still at that level so I had to resort to the things we were discussing there is no point going further in spiritual things until there is maturity the evidence of maturity and growth in the life of the hearers otherwise advancement in revelation is a waste are we together when a mother sees a child growing she knows that it is time to start weaning that child from breast milk and she will start introducing solids is that true until she totally disengages the child from breast milk but if that child is not growing is pale and sick even if it's past time to be weaned from breast milk she may still be forced to continue because of the condition of lack of growth that means there are some of you you have not justified the many conferences you have attended with your growth with relative to the conferences you have attended some things should not be in your life again and some things should have arrived your life by now even if what was coming use road transport it should have arrived by now whether you travel by road you travel by air you travel by train there is an allowable time we give you to arrive if you travel by road and after one two days you don't arrive we can still give excuses maybe something happened but after one week we know you were either kidnapped or you didn't even start the journey at all or you stopped on the way is that true 
but if we see you entering a plane a plane determines the quality of the vehicle that was helping you to be transported if you get into a plane and after three hours we don't find you we become impatient justifiably so because the quality of the vehicle that carried you should not allow you to delay for that long there are many of you who have sat down under superior spiritual voices and yet your growth does not justify the level of the mysteries that were taught you are we together but by all means you must make up your mind that after this conference it is not this version of me that came that will go back something must happen to my spiritual understanding something must happen to my stamina and my stature in the spirit something must happen to the the operation of the spirit within me something must happen to my character something must happen to my understanding spiritually if you are in agreement in one minute i'd like you to pray these four things lord they must happen in my life i open up my spirit someone is praying so that we can receive from this conference maximally outside make sure you are praying wherever you are the spirit of god is with you and for those who are following online make sure that you are praying blessed be the name of the lord go ahead and pray i obtain grace in the name of jesus that through this conference my spiritual experience evidently growing evidently growing evidently growing evidently growing growing in faith growing in love growing in understanding that the spiritual limitations of yesterday can no longer survive the power of light that is coming to my spirit now pray not only the altar of prayer the altar of evangelism let it be fan to flame that I will incorporate within my spiritual experience the burden of the spirit that which is the emphasis of God for the season God's emphasis must become my emphasis that a conference like this will prune my desires prune my appetite prune everything within my life that I will stand perfect and entire in the will of God for the season you are a man of God here pray that in the name of Jesus my hands will be strengthened he said Peter Satan has desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren so we have an assignment to strengthen the brethren you can strengthen a man of God who is getting weak you can strengthen someone that ministry is not working maybe there is a pastor maybe there is a prayer group someone about to give up spiritually now this conference was designed to refire your spirit to let you know that you cannot give up haven't worked with God for 10 years for 15 years pray that the limitations that stop you from enjoying a rich spiritual experience it must give way infirmities yokes curses orchestrations of darkness impediments to your growth and your excelling hallelujah now that we're on the same page i can begin to teach now so that i don't waste your time and we don't waste the time you see destiny is a function of time whatever you submit your time to you are submitting a part of your life to it will be a total waste of time in fact it will be seen and evil if these two days here is just full of galore and jamboree and a total waste of your time no you have made people who have traveled from all over to be here the greatest honor that can be given to your sacrifice of being here inside and outside is a sound exegesis of doctrine that produces maturity and stature by the time you are walking out of that door you walk out complete entire with spiritual intelligence backed up with the grace to defend what you know hallelujah 
let's get to the word now help us holy spirit in the name of jesus First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Let's begin to discuss our contemplations. First Chronicles 12. Okay, it's not projected. I don't have a screen here. I have to make do. So please forgive me when I have to pull up. Um, First Chronicles 12 and 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, it says to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. The Bible speaks of this tribe of Issachar, and he said among the many things that were commended or commendable about these people was that for some reason they were able to develop a spiritual strategy that would help them understand or discern the times and the bible says by reason of that advantage they secured a position among their brethren of dominion that their brethren were at their command at their command meant that until they moved the rest could not move because they stood in confusion everyone was confused but that this group of people for some reason were able to secure a system of drawing through intelligence the intention of the spirit per time per season and per dispensation and the bible lets us know that there was an implication upon their lives by reason of assuming that state they had dominion they were at the command their brethren were at their command we live in very troubling times and all over the world right now from post pandemic um many nations of africa many nations across the world europe the u.s the caribbeans asia and even down home here there's confusion in various regards politically speaking economically speaking and and so on and so forth and it looks like believers are confused men of god are confused what is god saying what direction do we move in you know and what happens most times is because many believers have not trained themselves to build their relationship with the Holy Spirit structurally and understand how to navigate through seasons. Most people are at a loss and so they have to wait until whoever leads, leads. And your prayer is that the person leading is leading aright. The reason why error spreads very quickly is because discernment is very little so whoever sets the pace even in error the damage will be so much before someone realizes and says no something needs to be checked so the bible says the sons of Issachar that they had an understanding of the times are we together and they knew what israel ought to do very very important this means that there is an approach and a strategy for every season the strategy and the approach for one season may not suffice for another season is that true for the bible to say that they were able to discern the times then the the knowledge of the times informed them of what strategy and what template to use for instance when it is rainy season for a farmer you agree with me that there is a strategy you must employ is that true that takes advantage of the season the moment you see heavy clouds and rain number one you may bring your bucket and keep it permanently outside because you expect rain to come so you are maximizing you are creating a strategy that helps you maximize the season number two the presence of the rain already saves you the burden of looking for water is that true so very quickly the ridges begin 
whether subsistence farming or industrial farming you make sure that you make ridges and now plant your seed when you plant your seeds and fertilize them you can go to bed knowing that you have aligned with the season and it is an advantage now you can still farm during dry season but you must invent another strategy that simulates rainy season in dry season you have to bring forth an irrigation mechanism so that the farm will still feel it is still under rainy season and grow like it will grow for rainy season but the burden and the pressure and the, the effort that you will put in dry season is not the same as it will be in rainy season so the bible says that the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time it means that every season god opens us up to spiritually speaking there are many treasures from heaven that are released in the midst of the chaos and those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear they can begin to develop by the spirit and the word the strategies that make for survival the strategies that make for thriving look at me please man of god the season that we are in now doing ministry as you have always done you will be surprised that you will suffer in ministry as if god did not call you and it's not backsliding it is just lack of discernment when they got to the red sea the strategy for victory was the rod but when they got to jericho the strategy was no longer the rod if they had used the rod they would be disappointed just because something worked yesterday does not guarantee that it will work today you have to be in alignment with the spirit to number one discern the season and then number two to be able to receive the strategy that's why you find out that there are people with uncanny mastery who can navigate and thrive through seasons it's not because they are special in themselves it is simply because they have mastered the art they have tapped into the wisdom and the grace that was upon the sons of Issachar to know what to do per season there are business people who have discerned seasons and even in business there are times where one product can just sell for five years and whoever plunges into it within that five years can be a billionaire after that five years whoever comes in late the bible says when the angel came and stared the water he didn't announce his coming you just see the water being stared so you have to invent a formula to know the first person who jumped in that means even if you are sincere and you took action once you are the second you will not be blessed please follow closely we have a very serious we are dealing with something very deep in the spirit tonight most believers do not know how to discern seasons and the reason is because we copy and we copy blindly we have ignored the ministry of the holy spirit something can work and in 24 hours its validity can expire and unfortunately most people will plunge into those formulas very late in the 60s and the 70s the church growth formula was that was when they brought the concept of tent meetings and the rest there was no internet there was no nothing and those who tapped into it were mightily used by god and they excelled but eventually things started changing and many of our fathers received the blueprint given to them and they started campgrounds and they started conventions are we together most people never knew that the internet the time will come when the internet will be able to capture the gospel but a few people discerned early and tapped into that now there are many people who believe it will remain like that forever it will be a lack of wisdom to believe that it will remain like that forever no those in the den world would never have believed that there would be any kind of metamorphosis who would have believed that if you were a professional typist you will be hungry today if you were a professional typist in 1990 you were a noble person but not in today's world so can you tell me what the next 10 years will be or do you believe the world today will still be the, the world of 10 years i'm not talking in terms of technology once upon a time you could easily give out tracts and do one-on-one -on -one evangelism you could just stand today if you stand near somebody's wife or somebody's child to preach jesus christ they can snap you immediately and by the next day you are in prison because they can say that's how terrorists behave so what then is the strategy 
no wonder jesus said go ye into all the world he told you what to do to go he told you where into the world he told you what to do preach but he never told you how to do it he left the strategy flexible because it, the strategy must be defined per season per generation per dispensation are we learning so the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time I remember about a decade ago or so the Lord opened my eyes and the Lord revealed to me how the gospel will be advanced through the internet within the next decade or so and I remember God giving me an instruction that time there were audios and he said take those audios and put them in the internet my angel will take it across the world I will bless people with it and I will announce you at that time if you wanted your messages to be heard you have to package it in cassette or CD you put it on the internet you are wasting your time and yet this was God seen with his all seeing eye because I'm saying this because there are some of you you came to this conference to receive the blueprint of the next 10 years because the days that are coming many will fall like a pack of cards they will not fall because they are sinners uh -uh. they will fall because that extra was not carried there were 10 virgins they were all virgins so it was not the issue of being a sinner the advantage of the five is that they said perhaps something changes let's make arrangement for it are we learning already so the Bible tells us that for every season there is a strategy. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 29, Jesus was speaking to John when he was caught up in the Isle of Patmos to the third heavens. And he says, he that hath an ear, please give us KJV media. Let's work with KJV all through. It says, he that hath an ear, thank you. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Look at me, please. There is what God is saying to everybody, but what there is what God is saying to believers. You can hear what he's telling everybody. The Bible tells us that the trees and the seas, they all sing his praises. God can speak. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. You can hear what God is saying to everybody, but have you heard what the Spirit is saying to the churches? He that hath an ear, that means not everybody has that kind of ear. If everybody has that kind of ear, you will not need to say he that hath. Are we together? He that had a visa card, let him come and use this ATM. So if you have a master card or any other card, they are wonderful cards, but not applicable for that instruction. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Hallelujah. It is very very important for us to understand what God is saying in Matthew chapter 24 from verse 37 to 39 Jesus was speaking about the end of the age and he made a very interesting statement that would serve as a compass for us as we explore how to thrive and excel in today's world in light of all the happenings from a spiritual perspective Jesus was speaking Matthew 24 from verse 30 seven do we have it matthew 24 37 let me just pull it up here so that we'll save time matthew 24 and verse 37 hallelujah all right it says but as but as the days of noah were so shall also be the coming of the son of man keep that scripture there so he already tells you that a clue to how you will survive is already captured for you in the Bible. That when you see the end of the time, one of the figures that you should study is the man Noah and the survival strategies of his time. Are we together? Because he says that the moment the end of time is coming, the situation on earth will parallel something that had happened before. The things that are written aforetime they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope 
what happened in the days of Noah reading to 39 if we are still together say amen. amen verse 38 now please it says for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark keep that scripture there that means there were two kinds of activities that were happening in the days of Noah. I'm interpreting this for you now. There were physical activities that gratified the flesh. But there were spiritual activities that were preparing for the days that were coming. Are you getting me now? He's not just talking about eating and drinking. He said in the days of Noah, people separated themselves into two categories. I'm praying that the eyes of your spirit will be open please you need to listen to this that means you know that the signs of the end times one of the major signs is that there will be a division on earth there will be people who are highly carnal their their pursuit will be my food and pleasure this is what he meant and then there will be a select group of people who will be in alignment to what god is saying he says the moment you begin to see that formation a flood is coming are you listening now? A flood is coming. Verse 39. They says, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That there is a flood like a tsunami. It came in the days of Noah people were eating and drinking it's just a prophetic expression to mean they were involved in physical activities whose scope was only satisfying the flesh nothing spiritual they were ignorant they could not read the writings on the wall but there was a man called Noah please give us Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1 begin to pray in the spirit if you can in one minute Shagroske Shabarandu Skaliataba Radosa Ziketela Asubre Haskilia Namalando Siata Hallelujah Glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father He is seated on the throne Hallelujah Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Are you praying? Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Listen. When Jesus was about to die, he told them, he said, if you want to understand the dynamics of my death, I will give you one sign, the sign of Jonah. That means make reference to Jonah's story and it will give you a picture of what is about to happen. They didn't understand what is the sign of Jonah, that Jonah was in the belly of the fish. What does that mean? It was a parallel to what was happening that Jesus, like Jonah, would go to Hades, the place of the dead. And there complete the process of redemption. And after three days, like the fish could not hold Jonah, so death could not hold him and it released him. That was a sign of Jonah. Now he's saying, if you want to study and have intelligence about the, the happenings that relate to the end of the age, he says do not miss it don't find yourself studying all kinds of things go to something that happened on earth the story of noah was not a parable it actually happened he says study it again because a similitude of it is coming and sign number one is that there was a separation between men those who were carnally minded all their concern was what to eat and the pleasure that came from activities like marriage and the rest he was not saying eating and marrying is wrong. It was only a picture to exemplify pleasure. Because the blessings of marriage appeals to the flesh. The blessings of food appeals to the belly. So it was a prophetic message that people were focusing on that which 
appeals to the flesh but there was a group of people Noah his wife their sons and their wives now let's study Noah just the first 10 verses Genesis chapter 6 is someone learning already for someone listen as you are listening to me it's not just what i'm teaching you are hearing there is a connection a transfer of the spirit of revelation that you will open the word of god and your eyes you will begin to see beyond just memory verses listen revelation look up please revelation is a combination of knowledge and understanding you only have revelation when you have knowledge and understanding. Knowledge is awareness of the presence of that truth. But understanding is drawing out the mystery from that truth. Are we together now? I pray, Paul was praying, he says that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. And it came to pass. Please look up. When men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. Number two, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, an ancient word for beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh his days shall be an hundred and twenty years verse 4 there were giants in those days upon the earth and also after that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children unto them I don't want to take you through all that story the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown if I keep this scripture here we'll spend a vigil till morning because this thing you see there is a parallel of it in today's world hallelujah the bible lets us know that the fight will be between the woman and her seed and the serpent and his seed it's not the serpent alone there is a generation of the serpent when jesus came and looked at the pharisees he said you are of your father the devil his will shall you do he said he was a murderer from the beginning that means there is a generation that was birthed as a result of an aberration between the physical and the spirit realm. The birth of Jesus shows us that a spirit can participate in the fatherhood of a human flesh. It is a man can be physical or spiritual. It is the woman that must be flesh. The man must not be flesh. It's in your Bible. How did Jesus arrive? So let's just, let's just leave that one because what we're dealing with is something else. And God saw, watch this now. God saw that the wickedness of man was great. Does that look like what is happening in the world now? There are two things that happened then that are happening now. Number one, multiplication. There is no time in human history where we have more people. Right now, the globalists are on an agenda to mass depopulate people in the earth because they are even con resources there's constraint of resources constraint of land and so on and so forth as in the days of noah the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually what did god do verse 6 and it repented the lord that he had made man on earth and it grieved him to, at his heart verse 7 the Bible says the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I made him verse 8 but Noah hmm, but southeast but Enugu state but Noah found grace please sit down now it's really now that our teaching is going to start but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord verse 9 now these are the generations of Noah what made Noah find grace in the eyes of the Lord Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God 
is someone learning already remember that the pattern given to us if we are to borrow the wisdom of Issachar that means we have to discern what time it is now so that we know what strategy to draw from scripture if you are driving in the afternoon and you have a torchlight on your hand it's a wrong strategy for the time the light already saves you that trouble if you are driving in the night with all your lights off is a wrong strategy for the night is that true you don't own the light of your phone and move around in the day because the season already comes with an advantage of light but when it is it does not mean you will throw your torch light you will save it when you see it get when you see it getting dark you now know that i have to change strategy if it is raining you don't wear a singlet and a little short and then start strolling outside when it is raining and it is cold the weather informs you of what strategy to use you will get a jacket are we together when you see someone in a hot blazing sun when other people are sweating and even you know flying their shirts and and wave, and giving themselves a, 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 you know fanning themselves and you see somebody with a thick jacket maybe a suit and a thick jacket like a, a winter coat on it that person is either sick or mad is that true listen i can know your discernment as i look at your approach has it changed since pre-covid has it changed since post-covid what spiritual strategy have you employed now because the strategy that most people are employed for their spiritual growth years ago may not easily work again now for instance when you were a student you didn't have children you didn't have a wife you didn't have responsibilities so you could pray for eight hours now that you are working in a, 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 a job that sometimes calls you on sunday the seasons have changed but like Issachar have you developed the strategy that maintains your fire because the template you use on campus can no longer suffice in the pre that is why those who escape campus life and are on fire after 10 years you see them and say what happened they were trying to use that template no more free food maybe daddy has gone to be with the Lord at that time you didn't have a job at that time there was break at that time you were not paying the school fees of anybody you must adopt a new template when you began to serve god you were a young man nigeria was not so evil you could do night vigil every day but now there is unrest have you developed the strategy by the spirit to still be on fire if there was lockdown lockdown was a message that church discerned a new strategy a season has come and it has changed many believers after three months of lockdown they backslided many things went down because the only way they know to grow is to get up and move to a place and the sons of Issachar men who had an understanding of the times they knew what Israel ought to do is God helping someone It was easy to give people posters and billboards and say come to my church on Sunday and right now you give people those things and they look at you and you find out that your money is going and the souls that should come is not commensurate to what is happening and you are wondering Lord what is the strategy every time Jesus comes into a life one of the first things he does is to disrupt status quo The man was used to rolling and falling but Jesus told him there is still another way you can be healed without entering the water if you look at me you can still leave because that water was a symbol of me stand up and walk so don't be surprised this is why you have to be careful you will see people not doing what you know to do and yet they will get fearful results that will surprise you by what strategy is this happening now that was what annoyed the scribes and the Pharisees because they knew there was a strategy they had and if you are to seek God this is the only way now Jesus came who is this miracle worker who is not behaving like us and yet he seems to be a man approved of God 
that was the same problem the early church had with Paul too where is this guy coming from he was not with Jesus at the beginning what gave him the credential to become an apostle when he was not part of us they didn't know that Jesus had appeared to him too are we together now So the Bible says, let's finish up that scripture. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Let's look at verse 10. And the Bible says, Noah beget Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Let's read on. The earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Uh -huh. It says, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Next verse. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy the earth. Next verse. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. We'll just keep this verse. If we can't do it today, we'll get into it tomorrow. Now, God is revealing to him the strategy. He said, Noah... Don't pray that I will not destroy the earth. This one is a written judgment. I have made up my mind that I will. The only thing you can do is your exemption. And if you will walk with me, I am going to reveal to you a strategy. And he says the strategy will cost you. It will not be free. You are going to build an ark. It will not come free for you. That strategy will make for mockery. That strategy, you will be touring a path that has not been known before. Are you ready for the controversy that comes with receiving this new strategy? Are we together? Noah found grace. Now, please look up. Do you know there are many believers, I tell you sincerely, who at the current pace of their spiritual understanding will be victims of the seasons that are coming. Not because they are bad, but simply because they are undiscerning. They have not sustained the intelligence of the sons of Issachar to be able to discern the times. Are we together? Yes. Sufficient within scripture is the intelligence that guides us to navigate through seasons. The Bible says, when you see that the end of age is coming, study that man called Noah. That the earth will be a parallel to what happened. Number one, that when it is the end of time, there will be multiplication. Numerical multiplication. There are arguably about, I think, eight, 7.6 billion people and counting on earth. Never has the earth had such people to that degree. Wickedness has multiplied like the days of Noah. But that then means the spirit is saying something to the church because he came to Noah and he says destruction is imminent I am bringing judgment upon the earth however because I have found you have found favor in my sight it then means that conferences like this are proof of God's favor they are a prophetic indication that God has looked upon a people and is ready to exempt them from the evil that will come in the times are we together now when Jesus walked upon the earth, he began a mentorship session that we call theologically the Beatitudes. He began to teach them a new culture and a new approach to life. And he started contrasting two systems. The Roman government and their system, their modus operandi, and the kingdom system. He started giving them a new orientation about how to function in the kingdom so he would say things like you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth is that true and then he began to speak to them blessed are this and that you say this in your law but this is what i say and he allowed a q and a he allowed them the freedom and the liberty to ask him questions they ask him questions that range from things like marriage divorce death whatever fasting eating with unwashed hands and he was generous enough to answer the question sometimes he answered the crowd sometimes he left them with the parables and went and gave the explanations to the disciples but the bible is generous enough to capture all the answers in this book for our learning are we together now i want to reveal to you 
in this conference what I believe from the authority of scripture and by the spirit of revelation the blueprint for survival for the days that are coming that any believer who does not subscribe to this pattern by the authority of scripture will not be efficient if you do not subscribe to this pattern that I'm revealing to you by the authority of scripture this is not a man's opinion it will be evil to come and give you an opinion it is risky to teach opinions at this time we must be discerning and intelligent enough you may have heard me say this in this kingdom it is written is greater than I saw it is written is greater than I heard it is written is greater than I dreamt for all of those expressions have not been tested and tried but the Word of God has been tried thoroughly are we together that means it is written can change what I saw it is written can change what I heard it is written can change what I dreamt about my security is not just in what I saw my security is not just what I I only believe what I heard if what I heard is consistent with what is written this is one of the platforms that will give you stamina and stability in the end times building a life and a ministry building your destiny around I saw the prophetic I heard revelation it will cost you casualties go and read your Bible when old prophets made mistakes go and read your Bible when sincere people missed it there were times that even Paul said I speak as a man but that which is written it abides forever when Jesus prayed and fasted and Satan came he didn't say I am Jesus he said it is written he defeated Satan in, in Matthew chapter 4 using it is written it was only when he did it is written that he purchased redemption that from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain and that it is written cursed is every man that hangs upon a tree is that true that the blessings of Abraham justification by faith might come upon with the Gentiles to the end that we may receive the promise of the spirit by faith it was not just quoting it it was when he did it the actual dying the prophetic dying of the lamb of, of the lamb that was slain did not bring us salvation he had to die physically maybe this is a prophetic word for someone right now we are in a, a strong apostolic and prophetic generation and that is wonderful thank God for the lavish release of graces for the prophetic abilities to access the spirit you build your ministry around heavenly encounters encounters in hell encounters with the spirits of just men made perfect as powerful as that is it will not stand the test of time Jesus already was having angels yet when Satan came he didn't say did you not see Michael Satan who defeated you he said it is Is someone learning now so let me just give you this as the foundation we must return to respect the supremacy of the Word of God above and beyond any and all spiritual experiences regardless how flamboyant they are because Satan can appear as an angel of light so it was written so that it will not be changed John what you have seen now right so that it will not be changed because even if you are Moses Satan can come to fight your body so that he will put another spirit when Jacob held, held listen when Isaac held his son he said something is strange here the smell is the smell of Esau but the hand is the hand of Jacob that means even in the realm of re the revelation and the prophetic there can be error you are touching something else and yet what is happening to you is something else there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his king them, there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe 
will reign forever to your kingdom there'll be no end listen listen i don't boast to know everything but i've seen great people fall like a pack of cards at the instance of the error of the prophetic I have seen people fall like a pack of cards. Not, not error from what was told them. Error by themselves. Did the Bible not even teach you that your own heart can deceive you? Is it not in the Bible? You don't need any wrong prophet or wrong apostle. Your own heart by yourself. Unassisted by any external. The heart of man by default. Unassisted. Outside of the mercy of God. Is wicked and deceitful above all things. So your heart can tell you God said. And later on when you grow, you will find out God did not really say. It was the hearing that your level taught. But that which is written stands sure. Please listen. When Solomon received the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the first test, watch this, was two prostitutes who came to him. Is that true? The Bible says there was a court case that stood before Solomon. One of it was that they slept and one slept and killed her child and quietly exchanged it. Is that true? That is deception now because both of them were sleeping. Sleep is something that is common to all men. And while they slept, someone exchanged it and they got up and this one said, it is my child. This one said it is my child. Now Solomon was going to show the supremacy of the wisdom of God. He would have said, I am wise. I know this will happen and just guess his way into error. But watch this. The moment Solomon saw that situation, he knew that the only way to discern the thoughts and the intent was to bring the sword, which is the word of God. He said, bring me a sword. The moment the knife arrived, the truth came out. Immediately. That, that word that is sharper than two-edged sword, the Bible said it sustains the power to cut asunder. Even doctors cannot do any surgical procedure beyond the human flesh. But the word of God can move past the realm of the flesh and discern people. The times we are living in are the times where a kiss that should be a sign of love can be a symbol to the enemy. This is the one, destroy him. You will need discernment beyond the realm of the senses. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book Judas of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart the from thy eyes, and the keep one. them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this Jesus. message, and we Jesus believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof the if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these the words in the come, midst of your heart. That he no matter the circumstance, evil, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you, you have been blessed, we will tell you to passion. share this message. Be Go an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos, we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on fire. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.